everybody's time. My name is Sarah Preston. I'm the executive director of Lillian's List. And I want to start by thanking you all for joining our first Scout webinar. Um, we really appreciate your commitment to helping recruit and train women who will advocate for reproductive freedom in elected office. I want to start out by sort of laying out what we're going to do here. First, we're going to go over what a Scout is what we look for in candidates, and how to start the conversation about candidacy. And we hope all of that will take about 30 to 35 minutes, maybe a little less, leaving us with plenty of time for questions at the end. You will be able to use the chat box to type in any questions you might have. So you may have heard us say that Lillian's List has a network of over 350 scouts all across the state. But what is a scout? Scouts are the people in our sisterhood who have told us that they are willing or able to help look out for leaders in their community. Leaders who might be interested in running for office. Sometimes people scout for us, contacting us with names and contact info without ever telling us they want to scout. We add these people to our scout network as well. Today we want to go over what we look for in a good potential candidate and how you can help by starting to have conversations with the women you know that you think should run for office. Let's start out with what we all want in an elected official. When we think about elected office, what do we envision in a great leader? We probably all want someone who is connected to their community and who will be responsive to the needs of her constituents. Somebody who listens, can broker compromises for the betterment of her constituents, people who share our values, who are principled, and who will fight for those values. These are the kinds of qualities Lillian's List looks for in potential candidates. But leaders don't just appear fully formed, and neither do candidates. Oftentimes, they may not have the innate ability to fundraise or make compelling public speeches, but if they have strong values that will resonate, are principled and act with integrity, they can learn those other skills. And Lillian's List can help. We have a thorough and robust training program. And if we find women who would make a great elected official, we can offer support. This is a list of Lillian's List trainings that we offer to women running for office at any level. We also train campaign managers to prepare them to support our candidates running for seats in the General Assembly. So here is our Help Wanted ad for a member of the General Assembly. This is what we hope our scouts are looking for in the women we know to identify a good potential candidate. She must be honest, hardworking, close to her community, and willing to listen to her constituents. She makes decisions with integrity and is transparent. She will ask for help when she needs it and is willing to learn about the issues that impact her community and act to better the lives of North Carolinians. Willingness to work odd hours and ask for help is also a must. So the next questions are, how do we get the leaders that we seek and deserve? Leaders oftentimes need to be identified recruited and trained to be able to run effective campaigns and govern. We know that women don't just wake up one day and decide to run for office. Oftentimes, people don't immediately think of themselves as leaders even when they are already behaving like one in their community. A woman often needs to be asked as many as seven times to run for office before she says yes. So we always need to be identifying and recruiting new potential candidates. But where do we look for great leaders? Women who are involved in their communities or professional or civic organizations are a good place to start. Another good place to look is your politically engaged friends, neighbors, or colleagues. Look for women who are arranging protests or rallies in your community. Remember, it will be helpful if the women you recruit have a large and influential network. Here are some ideas to get you started scouting for Lillian's List. First, you can Rolodex yourself. That means sitting down and looking through your own networks and contacts. 
If you can't find any women already in your network, some ideas would be to start volunteering for a local progressive nonprofit and keep an eye out for committed smart women or just ask around, your friends might know someone. So you found someone that you think would be an excellent candidate. It's time to start your conversation. People have lots of reasons to want to run for elected office, but there might be just as many obstacles barring the way for a woman seeking office. Most women have probably never thought of themselves as leaders or elected officials. And because women will give the thought careful consideration before agreeing, we often have to make the suggestion to them and Lillian's List is here to help think through the process. It is best that the suggestion to run for office come from somebody the potential candidate knows and trusts. So we need your help initiating these conversations. And we know it can be tough to get started. Here are some ideas for starting a conversation. This should be a one-on-one -on -one conversation that you have in person with your potential candidate. Always be honest. If you are very comfortable with this potential candidate and you know her well, you can just jump right in. If you don't know the potential candidate as well, get to know her. Here are some tips on getting to know a potential candidate and initiating the conversation. Ask if she considers herself political and try discussing what political or social groups you both belong to. Ask her about her greatest accomplishments and who she admires in public office. Have a conversation to see if she agrees with you on all the issues and supports reproductive freedom. Don't just assume. Once you've gotten to know her, you could try saying something like, a few of us were thinking about who we would want to see run for office and your name came up. Or you could say, I bet you would make a really great county commissioner or state representative. There are very few reasons that are true barriers for running for office, but what happens if your potential candidate objects? Some potential objections might be, my work or family take up too much time. It's not the right time for me. I'm not sure I can ask my friends and family for money. I'm really uncomfortable speaking in public. Things like picking up a child from daycare or concerns about asking friends for money or not liking to speak publicly are not complete barriers. There are things that can be addressed through helpful and supportive family or friends or learned through trainings and support from Lillian's List. In most cases, your response should be to try learn. Try to learn more. Here are some helpful questions you can ask to continue the conversation. If she says that her work or family take up too much time, you might ask her to go through some of her responsibilities with you. It may really be the wrong time for her, but some juggling may make it possible. We encourage all candidates to talk to their significant other first thing and make sure that they have a supportive partner. If they say that they are not sure they can ask friends or family for money, you should ask, are you completely unwilling to ask for money? If someone trained you on fundraising, would you be willing to try it? Only if a candidate says she's absolutely unwilling to fundraise, is that a barrier? If somebody is really uncomfortable speaking in public, ask what if there was a public speaking and personal narrative training you could take? This is a training that Lillian's List offers. It often takes multiple asks before a woman agrees to run, so expect objections. Perhaps she will laugh it off and call you crazy, or she may be flattered. Listen, but don't take these initial reactions as a commitment to run or a complete rejection of the idea. Keep the conversation going, but watch for real red flags. Here are a few real red flags. An unwillingness to fundraise at all, a comment suggesting she can't or won't make time to talk with voters, or a suggestion that she can't or won't commit the time necessary to govern should she win her election. Once you've had these conversations, you may get to a point where your candidate says yes. She is not just thinking about it, but she is committed. If your potential candidate seems open to the idea, 
suggests that she have a conversation with her family first. This is very important. Then follow up and suggest she look up Lillian's list and all of the support we offer. You could also nominate her to attend one of our Get Ready to Run trainings happening all over the state this summer and fall for women considering running for office in the next one to five years. We've moved through these slides very quickly, but here's where the homework comes in. We will send out a link to a potential candidate worksheet via email. The form offers you places where you can fill in the names of potential women candidates that you know. It also has a section at the top to include your contact information, and we ask that you fill that in. We are asking you to sit down with this form and your cell phone or other contact list and identify at least three women that you know that you think should run for office. Please fill in the form as completely as possible, including the middle names and addresses of the women you know who should run. We will review every form we receive, and if we decide to reach out to any of your suggested women, we will contact you to help us approach these women. Every potential leader you suggest will be added to our candidate database, which means they will, at the very least, get invitations to candidate trainings. Use the form to identify who you will start having conversations with and start watching for women who could be great candidates. Thank you all for joining the webinar. It looks like we now have plenty of time for questions if anyone has any.